What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. I know it's been a little bit since I posted my last one. I have been extremely busy with the businesses and life and the East Coast night shoot, which is what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into all the stuff I brought with me to the night shoot or just a range day in general, because this stuff pretty much stays consistent between range days for me, huge, huge thank you and huge shout out to Doc and the guys. Uh, JW Ramp, Hutch, all those guys for putting this event on for us to come to, for me to come to, uh, and everybody in the area. Really, really great guys. Huge, huge shout out to them because without them, stuff like those range days is like the East Coast Night Shoot wouldn't be possible. So huge shout out to them, Doc, if you're watching. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I didn't get to stop by and talk to you more while I was at the shoot, but we appreciate you. We love you, and thanks for putting on that event. But with that out of the way, I wanted to talk about what I brought exactly with me to the East Coast Night Shoot. And like I said, guys, this kind of stays consistent between most range days for me uh, with minor variations. So you're gonna get a pretty good idea in today's video what all I pack with me, how everything works, all that good stuff. Maybe give you guys some ideas on how to pack for your next range day. But with all that being said, guys, Let's start with my AVS and my helmet. AVS here, so you guys have probably seen this a million times uh, if you're not new to the channel. If you are new, this is my Swimmer Cut Cry AVS. Ferro Concepts Tear Front Flap. Always run P mags. I've just never had issues with them. I know guys are live and die by the Dura mags and USGI mags and all that good stuff. P mags work fine for me and they're pretty quiet. That's why I kind of like them. Those GI mags when they start getting low on rounds or they're empty super, super loud. That's the only reason I really run the P-Mags is because they're way quieter. And like I said, no issues. Behind those, uh, I threw in some North American Rescue Shears just in case I needed them. Uh, these don't always stay in here, but for the most part now they kind of do. Up top here, Microbat Systems Candy Pouch. This is good for any sort of like range maps or event maps or any kind of small stuff you need to stuff in your plate carrier since my admin pocket's kind of full of stuff right now. New Nightfall Solutions patches. Guys, if you weren't aware, I am co-owner of Nightfall Solutions. We are going to be bringing out some new patches to you guys. So if you guys wanna support us, that's awesome. There should be a pre-order up here in the next couple weeks for some cool IR patches. Like I said, guys, a good way to support me and my business. Now up top here, uh, this is a new addition to the kit. It is a cloud defensive little handheld pocket light. So far, really good. This guy has lasted me couple days on one charge just with using it here and there. This was really nice to get out of the noise fighters uh, bang bus RV and get up to the bathroom late at night uh, without pulling my phone out. So this was really nice to have on me. I usually kept this in my pocket, but for now it's living on the plate carrier. A couple optics tools just in case someone needed zero uh, or to re-zero, excuse me, or I needed to mess with mine. So that's pretty much the front. So you guys know, I like to keep my sides slick. As of right now, no body armor on the sides. That might change here soon. Now moving to the back, I know a lot of you guys are gonna have some problems with me running a back panel because I can't get to it myself and you'd be right, but more so I use the back panel just for storage and for stuff that like I wanna keep on my person and I don't need to grab super quick. Uh, so I agree with you guys there, but I like using back panels. It makes sense to me. Now inside here, I kept, because it was so cold, a Ferro Concepts hand warmer which hasn't been made in like a bajillion years, so don't ask me where you can get one or how Pharaoh can make you one. No idea, I just stumbled upon it. So next thing was a Pharaoh Concepts burglar beanie, which didn't really see a whole lot of use because I kept my helmet on and we'll talk about that why, but it was still nice to have for when I wasn't shooting or anything, I could throw this on and keep my head warm. Now, a new thing that I did start doing in my back panel is throwing in a MFAC resupply kit. Uh, just real basic first aid stuff, guys. I'm not a medic by any means, but uh, if you get messed up, I can probably help you out long enough until someone that's qualified uh, can get there and fix you up. But MFAC, it's really basic, really easy stuff. So pretty much anyone can, can use this guy. I think the hardest thing in the MFAC kit to kind of understand and learn how to use is the tourniquet, but even that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, so you guys can go grab these on Nightfall Solutions website. I know we have a couple of these in stock and they're a very popular item. And as you can see here, 
they fit down in the back panel like perfectly. So if you guys have a cry turtle shell, I would highly recommend maybe snagging one of those or doing your own thing and putting a little bit of extra medical in your plate carrier just because it never hurts to have it. Now that's the AVS guys. Let's switch over to the helmet and talk about what's going on there. All right, so most of you guys are probably also familiar with this. Nothing's really changed on the helmet. Uh, SNS lighting, so max mount, these are a big seller uh, for us at nightfall. I've pretty much not been able to keep these in stock because people always see it and want to know what it is because it's so slim and it has so much adjustability. So SNS max mount, if you guys weren't familiar, it, yes, it is very expensive to, to kind of get into a setup like this, but it is very much worth it in my opinion, as well as a SNS Precision Mantis strobe up top. This guy is really nice to have at night shoots just so people can see you, especially when you're shooting with people you don't necessarily know and don't like know how they're going to uh, move and, and operate in the nighttime. So when visibility is low, this is really nice basically just to not get shot. Um, not saying the event had any bad people at it uh, per se, but this guy is really nice just to keep keep yourself visible when you're around people you don't know. Up front here, Wilcox L4G24. This has been the same on the helmet for a while now. PVS 15s, still working on finding a duffel bag full of cash to buy 31s. Uh, so 15s for now work really well. I have the SC Irregulars retention system on these guys just to take some of the slop out of the Wilcox. Peltor Contact 3s, the tried and true 3s that I have been meaning to upgrade to the 5s or the 7s or the 69s or whatever they're on nowadays with the Dynamic Fuzz, Fuzz Baffles, and then the Noise Fighters, Sightlines, Gel Cups. Have a video on all three of those products in conjunction up on the channel so you guys can go check it out. Inside, TNDC 4D TAC pads. Pretty much kept the helmet on all weekend just so the pads didn't freeze on me because it was so cold and they did start to freeze on me a little bit so it did kind of suck hence why i was kind of saying i didn't really wear the burglar beanie all too much on the back here microbat systems flathead counterweight this thing is awesome super low profile holds just enough weight to offset the 15s first beer helmet cover i know i get a lot of questions about that ebay is going to be your friend guys if you want to buy these so just go on ebay don't DM me or ask me anymore. I mean, you can, but eBay, I'm telling you right here, right now, eBay is where you're gonna find them. So that was the ops core that I wore for the weekend. Uh, the baffles and the sight lines and the fuzz, that was kind of my first real experience with them all put together and being around machine guns, uh, pyrotechnics, all that stuff during the night shoot. The baffles and the sight lines Perfect, guys. I seriously recommend going and picking these up and throwing them on your contacts or your amps if you have them. Makes a huge, huge difference, especially on the threes and the older tech uh, contacts that aren't as good as the new stuff. Makes the threes feel like fives. So it's a cheap way to kind of upgrade your hearing protection until you can save up and get the new Comtac 69s or whatever I said they're on now. So, uh, and then you can get them for those too. So not a huge, not trying to shill out here, but uh, I really do believe in these products. And this past weekend shows me that they really do work. So that was the helmet. Let's move on to the rifle. All right, so you guys have probably seen this before. Not much has really changed on this either from last year's night shoot. The only thing I did change was the grip up here as well as my switch setup. And that was simply because last year I had the Arasaka hand stop as well as I think the Surefire dual switch or just two flat mod buttons did not work for me at all. That was like a huge eye opener for me and like getting behind the gun with that set up at night and like messing with it didn't work at all. So that's just a testament to show you like get out and actually use your stuff because sitting in your house and not shooting uh, your rifle set up the way you have it and then going out to the range, you'll probably realize you need to change something or you hate it. So that was an eye opener for me. So I switched it to the mod button with a ramped one from HRF Concepts for the light and laser, just so that way uh, it's very easy to distinguish under nods. Hey, my flat buttons, my white light, my ramps, my laser, and the Onyx Arms foregrip is just more comfortable to kind of hit the switches than that uh, index or finger stop I had. 
up front here. Still using the LA5. Uh, it's starting to show its age a little bit. My illuminator is starting to get blown out. Overboard system swivel mount with the Surefire and Arasaka M600 white and IR light setup thing that I conjured up a couple years ago. Still runs good, runs really nice, works perfect for what I needed. I know there's better stuff out now, but works for me. Aim point on the overboard riser, works awesome. Go check his stuff out, uh, local, local made stuff, really like it. It's nice, it's affordable, never had any problems with it, and he's a super cool guy and real fun to kind of meet up with and shoot sometimes. But one thing I did change, I switched my Radian Raptor out for the Silencer Co. gas defeating charging handle. Video on this soon, I'm not really sure how I like it yet. So far so good, I know there's some bad stuff online about these guys. I did not get to shoot this over the night shoot weekend, suppressed, unfortunately it was not in in time. So until my RC2 gets out of ATF jail, NFA jail, uh, probably won't have a super scientific video on it, more so just quick thoughts uh, until I get a suppressor for this gun or until my suppressor gets unlocked and I can have it. Uh, BCM stock with the Bucky sticker, you guys know, that's my thing, the big old Bucky's beaver on the stock or the yeet stick stock. Those are kind of my two go-tos as well as the Ferro Concepts Slingster. So that was the rifle setup. Worked really, really well for me during the weekend. Had no issues with it. So let's jump into the staccato. All right, so the holster setup and the handgun setup that I was using at the night shoot was my Staccato XC. Nothing really to report back on yet with the XC. So far, it's still running strong. I had a ton of people shoot this gun and they fell in love with it. Um, that's honestly kind of why I bought it was just so other people could shoot it. Uh, I had probably have shot this thing less than other people. So it's a really fun gun to shoot, really nice. It's been my everyday carry for a little bit now, but I like bringing it to the range and having people shoot this thing and realize like it does not move when you pull the trigger. It's kind of insane. So staccato ran good. Traditional arms holster, like I said, because I don't have a Safari Land yet, but so far I think this is probably gonna be my USPSA holster just because it's straight draw, there's no buttons or anything, and it's pretty quick. Um, but for those range days, I'm probably gonna use the Safari Land 6354 RDS, I believe. So when that comes in, expect a video on that, but this holster otherwise performed really, really well, no issues. I did add an X300 Turbo on the Staccato and my God, is this thing nuts. Whenever I have my X300 back that was on my Glock or the X300U, I'm gonna do a video comparing the Turbo to the X300U. The X300U is currently being prototyped for some aftermarket parts to offer to uh, some of my 2011 guys, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but that was kind of the guns I was using over the weekend, so let's jump into the Pelican and what I was wearing and wrap up the video. All right, so you guys have probably seen this before. Nothing really changed in here, but for those of you that are new, I'm gonna go over it for you. So this is my Pelican. I don't remember exactly what model this is, but it's like perfect for like a short, small range day where I don't need to bring like some huge giant vault with me. On the lid here, all Microbat systems, candy pouches. Uh, I keep my iPro and my Pelican just so they don't get smashed and they fit like perfectly in this guy and they're real easy to get in and out, so that's why I leave them in here. Also, just so I don't lose them. Up here at the top, I keep uh, a baggie with some extra batteries in it, as well as some lubricant, which I need to replace, some foamies, a couple tools, uh, a couple punches, a Sharpie, and writing utensils up here. This is kind of just miscellaneous stuff. Uh, extra cat tourniquet, just because why not? Up here in this guy, I also keep more batteries, so CR123s, AA's, AAA's, the whole nine, just in case something goes down. Down here, I keep just random bikini covers. This one's kind of just useless stuff, but sometimes it gets filled up with useful stuff, which is always nice. Uh, down here, I have a lighter uh, and some 550 cord, just in case I need it. And then down inside the case, uh, this kind of changes out more so than the top. So I will keep my tier tactical gunfighter belt in here. So this setup hasn't really changed much. I did end up going back to the STAC Kiwis just because they fit the 
they fit the staccato mags a little bit better. Um, I do know they make staccato specific ones, but I'm cheap and I'm broke right now. So the nine mil Glock ones will have to work. In here, I also keep a good handful of mags, uh, just depending on how much stuff I'm bringing. Sometimes they'll go in the ammo can. If they'll fit in here, they'll stay in here. So I'll bring uh, handgun mags, 5.56 mags, anything I could really need. Uh, also, Caleb, uh, you left your Dur mag in my case, so it's mine now, even though I have a way cooler P mag. I don't know, sorry Dur mag guys, but P mag, I like them more. Uh, T-shirt, this one has obviously seen some use uh, just to wipe stuff down. I think Grizzly Media had to steal this for a little bit. Shout out to him because he left a steel industry shirt in my box for letting him use my raggedy T-shirt. So huge thank you to you, man. I appreciate you. That is the Pelican. Not much going on here. Like I said, this is kind of the perfect size to fit uh, mags, the gun belt. I can even take all three of these holsters so I can take all this stuff with the staccato, with the Glock and fit it all in there pretty comfortably. So this is kind of like a really nice do it all Pelican. I'll have to get the model and leave it down below for you guys so you guys can check it out. But let's move on to the cold weather stuff. All right, so I lied a little bit. Uh, it's not really cold weather stuff, but more so just what I wore with a ton of layers underneath. So. The old reliable Cry G3s came with me to the event with thermals on underneath and some Carhartt boot socks and I was perfect. It was super cold, but that worked out perfect. As well as the Orc PCU, as you guys can probably see, uh, I was shooting some pretty dirty suppressed guns, so my sleeve's pretty caked in carbon. But the Orc PCU worked really, really well for me. Uh, I had just a ton of layers on underneath of it. And this, the cries and the layers in conjunction with the hand warmer, the beanies, and December Customs, actual like pocket hand warmers. Shout out to you guys for giving uh, me and Noise Fighters those actual pocket hand warmers. That was awesome. I was probably gonna die if you didn't. So huge shout out to December Customs for hooking it up uh, halfway through the event. But with all being said, guys, uh, my road mic's about to die. So I didn't wanna make this video too long. Hopefully I can cut it down a little bit uh, in post-production. But with all being said, guys, I'd appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps my channel out. With all being said, I will catch you in the next one.